Mr. Donahue, on December 27th, you had a 90-minute conversation with the president where he raised false claim after false claim with you and Mr. Rosen. How did you respond to what you called a, quote, stream of allegations? The December 27th conversation um, was, uh, in my mind, an escalation of the earlier conversations. As the former acting AG indicated, there were a lot of communications that preceded that. As we got later in the month of December, the uh, president's entreaties became more urgent. He became more adamant that we weren't doing our job. We need to step up and do our job. Um, and he had this arsenal of allegations um, that he wanted to, uh, to rely on. And so I felt in that conversation that it was incumbent on, on me to make it very clear to the president what our investigations had revealed and that we had concluded, based on actual investigations, actual witness interviews, actual reviews of documents, that these allegations simply had no merit. And I wanted to try to cut through the noise because it was clear to us that there were a lot of people whispering in his ear, feeding him these conspiracy theories and allegations. And I felt that being very blunt in that conversation might help make it clear to the president that these allegations were simply not true. And so as he went through them in what for me was a 90-minute conversation or so, and what for the former acting AG was a two-hour conversation, um, as the president went through them, I went piece by piece to say, no, that's false, that is not true, and to correct him um, really in, in a serial fashion as he moved from one theory to another. Can you give me an example of one or two of those theories? So uh, one that was very clear at that point uh, was the Antrim County, the ASOG report that I mentioned earlier. The Allied Security Operations Group released this report that said 68 percent error rate. There was, in fact, in Antrim County a hand recount. Um, had nothing to do with the department. The department did not request that. That was pursuant to litigation brought by other parties. But there was a hand recount. So they were able to compare the hand recount to what the machines had reported. And for the ballots that were actually counted by the machine, more than 15,000, um, there was one error, one ballot. Um, and I did a quick calculation and came up with 0.0063 percent error rate, which is well within tolerance. And so I made it very clear to the president, because he was so fixated on the ASOG report in the December 15th conversation, <clears throat> that, in fact, our investigation revealed that the error rate was 0.0063 percent. So that, Mr. President's example, what people are telling you that is not true and that you cannot and should not be relying on. Um, so that was one very explicit one, and I think you see that reflected in my notes. We went through a series of others. The uh, truck driver who uh, claimed to have moved an entire truck to trailer of ballots from New York to Pennsylvania, that was also incorrect. We did an investigation with the FBI interview witnesses at the front end and the back end of that, that trailer's um, transit from New York to Pennsylvania. We looked at loading manifests. We interviewed witnesses, including, of course, the driver. Um, and we knew it wasn't true. Uh, whether the driver believed it or not was never clear to me, but it was just not true. So that was another one that I tried to educate the president on. Um, there were a series of others, mostly in swing states. Of course, he wanted to talk a great deal about Georgia, the State Farm Arena video, which he believed, for various reasons, uh, was, as he said it, fraud staring you right in the face. Were any of the allegations he brought up found credible? Did you find any of them credible? No. So during this conversation, did, did you take handwritten notes directly quoting the president? I did. And to make it clear, um, Attorney General Rosen called me on my government cell phone, said he'd been on the phone with the president for some time. The president had a lot of these allegations. Um, I was better versed in what the department had done just because I had closer contact with the investigations. And the AG asked me to get on the call. Of course, I agreed. Um, and I began taking notes only because at the outset the president made an allegation I had not heard. I had heard many of these things. I knew many of them were investigated. Um, but when the president, at least when I came to the conversation, when he began speaking, he brought up an allegation I was completely unaware of. Um, and of course that concerned us. So I simply reached out and grabbed a notepad off my wife's nightstand and a pen and I started jotting it down. That had to do with an allegation that more than 200,000 um, votes were certified in the state of Pennsylvania that were not actually cast. 
Sometimes the president would say it was 205, sometimes he would say it was 250, but I had not heard this before, and I want to get the allegation down clearly so that we can look into it if appropriate, and that's why I started taking those notes, and then as the conversation continued, I just continued to take the notes. Let's take a look at the notes, uh, if we could right now. Uh, as we can see on the screen, uh, you actually quote President Trump asking, where's DOJ, just like we heard him say in his first television interview. How did you respond to that? So both uh, the acting AG and I tried to explain to the president on this occasion and on several other occasions that the Justice Department has a very important, very specific, but very limited role in these elections. States run their elections. We are not quality control for the states. We are obviously interested in and have a mission that relates to criminal conduct in relation to federal elections. Uh, we also have related civil rights responsibilities, so we do have an important role. But the bottom line was if a state ran their election in such a way that it was defective, that is to the state or Congress to correct. It is not for the Justice Department to step in. And I certainly understood the president as a layman, not understanding why the Justice Department didn't have at least a civil role to step in and bring suit on behalf of the American people. Um, we tried to explain that to him. The American people do not constitute the client for the United States Justice Department. The one and only client of the United States Justice Department is the United States government. And the United States government does not have standing, as we were repeatedly told by our internal teams, OLC led by Steve Engel, as well as the uh, Office of the Solicitor General, researched it and gave us um, thorough, clear opinions that we simply did not have standing. And we tried to explain that to the president on numerous occasions.